Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the new episode of Real Talk at the Barbershop. I'm Tony Walla, and I am so very, very happy to be here one more time to have a great conversation with a great individual. Uh, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I am super duper excited today. Why? Because I get to talk to the one, the only April Showers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, April Showers, CEO of Afro Unicorn. I'm so excited. April. Hey, Tony. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you're with us today. Me too. You know, thank you so very, very much for agreeing to have this conversation. You know, I love kind of hanging out and having good, a good talk, a good chat with good people who are doing good things in the world. And you are really doing it up. Thank you. How's it going? Living the dream. You know something? Everybody, everybody, y'all don't know this, and people don't know this, but April and I go way back. Like, I've known April for a long time. We have another life. <laughs> we won't even get into that. But what she has done is amazing. April, what you have done really, really is fantastic. You have created Afro Unicorn. And as I understand it, you are the only Black woman to fully own, to be fully licensed with a character brand. Correct. The only one. Correct. So what what the so so just for background, what does it mean to be a licensed character brand owner? So a licensed character brand is like your Ariel. Okay. And any Disney character, Batman, Spider-Man, those are licensed characters. So now Afro Unicorn is a licensed character. We are the like the Disney princess Afro Unicorn. What? It's so that means so that means that if I want to use your Afro Unicorn, I better be asking for your permission. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so cool about being the licensed brand character is that it allows us to be in so many different categories. I know we're going to talk about that, but just like if you decided you wanted to have an Afro Unicorn birthday party, you can have an Afro Unicorn birthday party and get all your party supplies right here at Walmart. Isn't that something? That's very cool. So tell me about Afro Unicorn. How did you start it? What, how did you come up with the concept? What, what drove you to start this? So a friend kept referring to me as a unicorn over and over again. Um, and I'm like, Cortez, why do you keep calling me a unicorn? He said, well, because you have multiple businesses. I run and operate an insurance agency. I'm a licensed real estate broker, and I'm a single mom of two amazing honor roll student boys. Wow. He said, you're a unicorn because of that. I'm like, I'm a woman. That's what we do. He's like, no, you do it at an extraordinary level. You are indeed a unicorn. I didn't know much about the unicorns. I thought that they, well, I didn't know. I was into yeah, yeah. basketball, mud pies, video games. So I went to go Google them, and I saw that they were unique, that they were mystical. I'm like, I'm definitely unique. I'm black girl magic. And so I am this unicorn. So I started to use that emoji in our phones over and over again. And then one day it hit me. Why was it only white? Like, who determined that it was only supposed to be white? So at that moment, it didn't resonate with me anymore. Yeah. So I went to go find one. I couldn't. And so instead of complaining about it, I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. And that is why I created Afro Unicorn. Isn't that something? So you make this decision. I'm going to create this brand. I'm going to create this Afro Unicorn. And so what, did you find somebody to help you design it? Did you kind of have your own vision and kind of sketched it out yourself? How, how did you go about developing it? Well, I'm definitely the hangman sketch artist, so <laughs> no. But I am very creative. I'm a visionary. So I knew what I wanted this unicorn to look like. Uh -huh. and I knew I wanted to look like me. And so I contacted my cousin, who was a graphic artist at the time, and I just was texting him and saying, hey, she has to have a crown. She has to have um, jewelry. Uh -huh. and she has to have this big, you know, hair. And so we designed it together. What was the your first entry? Like, you know, after you drew it out, what did you decide to produce first with the Afro Unicorn? A shirt. Okay. 
a shirt because I was being identified as a unicorn and I because I'm a multiple serial entrepreneur, so I went to find other women who were doing what I was doing and and give them the representation of the unicorn. So I'm saying, look here, you are an Afro unicorn because you're handling your business. So I literally just wanted to, a shirt for people to identify with. So that's how it started. So you produced this shirt? I produced pr produced a shirt. And everybody went crazy. Well, no, I contacted 25 women first. Oh, okay. To birth my idea. Like I had a birthing party for African Unicorn, which is April 28th, 2019 is the day African Unicorn was birthed. Because that's when I told these women, hey, I am creating this table. They say if they don't give you um, a seat at the table, you bring your own folding chair. So I had a long table with 25 folding chairs around. And I said, we're going to create an environment where we support and help each other. Wow. And I'm giving you all these unicorn shirts. And this is how you're going to identify yourselves. And this is how we're going to move forward. And we're going to just keep uplifting other women and bringing other women into this setting with us. Um, I purchased items if they were entrepreneurs to share with the other 24 ladies that were there. And that's how it started. And then when I launched the social media page, which I didn't have social media back then, because really it was just a movement. Okay. I really wanted to create a movement to encourage people to follow your dreams and your passions. Yes, yes. And so I got on social media because they were like, well, what's the IG handle? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and we created that May 1st, and I started to post the ladies uh -huh. and talk about their businesses and what made them unique, divine, and magical, and told everybody, this is why you should follow them. This is why you should support them. And then my son ended up going to the hospital on May 12th for 20 days. The brand launched on May 17th. I wasn't going to launch it, but people kept telling me, no you have to still do what you plan to do. Uh -huh. So I learned a lot about social media and Instagram while I had all that downtime in the hospital. And yeah, I would just find people that resonated with my message, people that already identified as black unicorns or unicorns or black female entrepreneurs or black super women. And I would just find those women and I would say, hey, have you ever seen an Afro unicorn uh -huh. before? I created a brand of women of color who hustle, follow the movement. That's how we got the likes of Tiffany Haddish, Alicia Keys, Sherry Shepard. All of them jumped on board because I went out and I engaged with them. And I told them, hey, you're already in this space. You're already a unicorn. Now I have a product that matches your, your, your whole flow, your whole stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. It must have been incredibly special for these women uh, that you uh, took the time and the effort to gather them. Uh, to be able to learn from each other and uh, be 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 an encouragement to each other, something that um, you know is most definitely needed uh, today. And I think about, I really think about as we look at the issues of mental health that are taking place right now, where people um, automatically think that mental health is all about going to see. A, a, a therapist or going to a, a, a going to some analyst or those kinds of things, but that there are other ways of creating mental health, mental wellness. Uh, and this, I would suspect, is probably an example of that. Oh, for sure. It, it's what motivates me knowing that there are so many other entrepreneurs that are looking for the success of Afro Unicorn. So every day I'm motivated because I don't want to let anybody down. Wow. How do you handle that pressure? I just do it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I feel like I have no choice. I've been placed in this position. I'm here. And so I have to make it happen for the others that are looking. Like, yeah. I can't. I'm not going to disappoint them. I, I, I invited them into this space and I invited them into this world. So it's my responsibility to perform at the at the highest level. That's awesome. So that they can know that it it's possible and that they can and will do it too. So uh, you know, going back to your to your products, right? So you you first create the t-shirt, you bring these women together, then all of a sudden everybody wanted a t-shirt. Yeah, everybody wanted a t-shirt and everybody wanted every other thing. Well, can you have bags with African unicorn? Do you have uh -huh. bedding with African unicorn? Like, they wanted everything. And thankfully, I was able, at the time, I was doing um, e-commerce, print-on-demand. So they had a lot of the products that they were looking for. 
So I had all these products that they were asking right, me right, for. Right. So, and then maybe like a couple of years later, African Unicorn is all about promoting other people. We promote women businesses, business owners, men business owners, children who are looking to get into the entertainment business. We promote everyone. So uh -huh. there was a little girl. Her name was Cassidy Brianna. She started kicking it with me when she was two. Uh -huh. And then at four, she's a Brooklyn native, and she was taking photos in her African Unicorn shirt, and someone walked by her in the gardens and said, I love your, I love your hair. She said, thank you, it's an Afro. And that video just went completely viral with Viola Davis sharing it, Tina No shared it, and then Oprah Daly shared it, and then that's when I got the call from Walmart. Isn't that something? And so you get this call from Walmart. What did you do? Did you say, like, y'all y'all playing with me? You know, um, we haven't talked about it, but I'm a really big manifester. Okay. Like, I, I speak things into existence. I write them down. And then I really focus on those items. My son does the same thing too. And just right before I got the Walmart email, me and my son had a conversation where I was frustrated with another part of the business. Okay. And I didn't know what to do at this point. And my son said, well, well why don't you consider Walmart? My son at the time was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. why, why don't you consider Walmart? And because I... A lot of times we get in our own head, in our own space. I didn't think I could do Walmart. So I'm like, I, I, I don't want to go on Walmart. Like, I, I, I'm not uh -huh, thinking about Walmart. Uh -huh. And he was like, okay, well, I don't know why you wouldn't. And then he just walked away. And within minutes, he he's my COO, chief operating officer. Uh -huh. So we share email accounts. He opened that door and he looked at me. He said, mommy, you see that email? I said, yeah. The moment I had some doubt, God was like, uh-uh, little girl. <laughs> Let me pull you what? back in. You know, I'm so happy that my son had enough faith to think it up. And so he said it. I got the email. So I really wasn't, I mean, I was blown away, but I was more blown away that my son yes, yes. had just said it. And then it happened. So what was your first meeting with Walmart like? What You, you get this email from Walmart you know, what did they ask? I mean, what did they want from you? So the email asked about party supplies. Okay. Like, they say, have you ever considered party supplies? And I'm like, of course I've considered party supplies. I threw a party on our birthday, April 28th, and it was all decked out Afro Unicorn. Uh-huh. So I'm like, yeah. And so she, the merchant at the time, just wanted to set up a, a Zoom call with me and introduce me to a few people, which were licensees. That's uh -huh. how I first found out about licensing through Walmart. Um, had Walmart not came to me with this opportunity, I probably would have sold the company at some point. Because I something? built it to sell. I didn't believe that I could be in this position and have the brand go worldwide. When I first launched it, I said it would be a household name. It was going to go everywhere. But I didn't know that I could still be the CEO of the brand. I thought that I would have to sell it to a major company in order to get it across the world. Okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, Walmart fixed all that for me. So you you, you went from, a, from t shirts to party supplies, and then what? <laughs> so, from party supplies, uh -huh. we met with more merchants and we went directly into apparel, all doors. By the way, this shirt is here at Walmart. What? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we went all doors um, with apparel. And then that, th th this thing just blew up. Because we just launched last year. We launched This in is June. all happened. June 2022, we launched June in, in Walmart with one first category, followed by apparel. And then just when I, we're in 17 categories. What? Yeah. We have bandages here. You know, is there is, is there something that you that you haven't seen yet that you want to do? Where's the camera so I can talk directly to the Walmart <laughs> folks? <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there's, your, there's your camera right there. <laughs> All right, so we're launching in fruit snacks next month, which I'm really excited about. But we would love to fill the lunch pails that are coming next month and the backpacks with everything. We're talking about cookies, potato chips. Of snack pack, uh -huh. anything you can put in a lunch pail, anything you could eat, cereal, ice cream, I want it all. <laughs> Merchants, y'all hear that? 
Y'all, y'all hear that, Merchants? Come on, let's make it happen. You know, she do, she, she's done right by us. Come on, let's do this thing. And you really have. It is amazing to me how, um, how this has taken off. And what I love the most is just how happy your products make people, they just make people happy. Little girls get so excited. I've been in Wal- in Walmart and seen little girls walk by all the Afro unicorn stuff and mommy, mommy, Afro unicorn, you know, so excited about it. That has to feel really good. Oh yeah, I've gotten better, but I would literally like cry every morning and cry in the evening because I would get DM. Yeah. And you'll see, you see all the posts. Right, I do. And so for a long time, and some of them still do shake and move me, but it's it's overwhelming to hear the stories too. Like I recently a lady shared with me that her daughter now wears her hair naturally because of Afro Unicorn. Wow. That's special. That is. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. What um what do you think for you has been the biggest challenge as as this entrepreneur? And I mean, you've done a number of entrepreneurial, you're in a number of entre- entrepreneurial fields. So, um, and I'm sure that 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 brings some challenges with it. Mm-hmm. What has been some of the biggest challenges for you as an entrepreneur? Well, the biggest challenge in this space is my competition. Mm. I, I'm the first black woman to have a licensed brand character in major retail, and that's great. And I love the opportunity. My competitors... Disney, Marvel, and Nick have hundreds of millions of dollars in marketing budgets. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I was out here for the um, Racial and Equity Entrepreneurial Summit. And so we were just talking about as being a, a Black entrepreneur, especially being here at, at Walmart. And my story to me is like, they, they have their concerns too about, you know, coming in, getting their foot in the door, but still it's not an even playing field. Mm-hmm. It's really not even playing field in the space that I'm in on the licensing side because I'm competing against big motion pictures, big yes. animation, episodic TV series, and I'm graded on the same level. Mm, mm. Coming in the gate, these companies are celebrating 50th anniversaries. We're one year into retail. Wow. So that weighs a lot. So anytime I get an opportunity, which I thank you so much for having me here, because it's just another opportunity to get the message out about Afro Unicorn. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all better be supporting Afro Unicorn. Y'all hear me? Period. We needs you. Thank you. I love it. When you think about what is happening in the world today, uh, where we've started off by not seeing a whole lot of of, of really positive imagery uh, that that help uplift, you know, our young, you know, you know, black and brown young people, people of color, uh, and um, and now you kind of seeing a little bit of a transformation. Do you ever think about the impact that your brand is having in that whole movement? Oh yeah. So one of the whys behind Afro Unicorn, as it relates to representation. I always say it's to help normalize Black beauty. And what I mean by that is that throughout history, Mm -hmm. you know, we've had this European standard of beauty. And we've never questioned, is it okay for me to wear a rock Cinderella or Snow White? We just have, because that's what's been given to us. It was a pretty princess, and that's what we wore. So now I want Afro Unicorn to be that normal so that everyone feels inclusive yeah. to rock and support it. I want black to be set, black and brown to be celebrated as the beauty that it is. And I'm seeing it. And I'm really, really like we went to um, we were in Colorado at the Unicorn Festival a couple of weeks ago, where the demographics was probably, I would say for for black and brown people, it was probably less than 20%. Okay. They was coming in droves rocking out for Unicorn. Everybody. Everybody. It was a very inclusive uh-huh. event. All types of people. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this is what it's about. Yeah, and they right. just love Afro Unicorn. Everyone loves Afro Unicorn because it's a beautiful character. 
who happens to be brown. Mm. So I'm helping to normalize it. There's been studies done, a lot of toy studies, uh -huh. and you know, gravitating to the lighter dolls, white dolls versus the, the dark dolls, um, or the brown dolls. And that's what Afro Unicorn, I'm here to be that middle ground mm -hmm. to say, I'm gonna pick up Afro Unicorn because it's just a cute unicorn, it's a beautiful unicorn. And she just got a little bit more style than that regular one. <laughs> so we don't rock with it. But when I'm telling you, them yeah. little girls showed up in their African unicorn <gasps> dresses and ran up to me like, look, I, I have arrived. They love it. <sighs> And so I'm helping to normalize black beauty. That is awesome. Well, I'm, I know for a fact that you're really making a difference. I I have uh, a, a little, little friend. Her name is Eden. And Eden uh, actually is uh, has done a lot of the a lot of modeling for Walmart. So a lot okay. of the, like some of the print ads, uh, you'll you'll see her. And if I'm not mistaken, I know that I've seen one with her wearing some you know Afro Afro unicorn apparel, right? And she is the biggest fan. She oh. she just loves you to death, to life. She just thinks that you, what you do is, you know, is is so super special. And so I, I we, we know that it's happening, you know, because we see it in the numbers. I mean, your stuff is selling like hotcakes. But when you get to hear and see uh, someone on a one-on-one on, on, on -on -one who is changed by what you're doing, it's pretty special to see. Oh, definitely special. Yeah. I love it. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? In the next five years. So we are building an entertainment company. Well, we have built it, Afro Unicorn Entertainment, me and my partner, Skia Fountain. And we, it's twofold. Uh -huh. One is to help other brands like ourselves get into this licensing space. Because I might be the first, but I will not be the last. Uh -huh. So our goal is to find talent to bring them in through the agency, through licensing. So that's going to be ongoing. We want to develop more brands to bring to Walmart. Now, we actually have one coming to Walmart. Thank you. It's an Afro, her book. Walmart is, um, has purchased her book, and it's coming I think in August. Wow. So we're doing what we said we were going to do. And then the other part, the entertainment, is location-based entertainment. Uh, so we want to have activity centers. We want you to be able to come and experience the land of Afronia and come in and have pizza and cake and play with the characters and play the arcades and get, and get all the prizes. We want our own hotel. We want our own hotel and water park. We want our own... Um, Land, you know, we want Af Afronia land, land of Afronia. We want an amusement park. We have big, big plans. I see you, you, you. When you dream, you don't play, do you? Ah, yeah. oh, that's gonna be awesome. Afronia is the land, yes. huh? Afronia. Oh. So, 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 where's my role in Afronia? Oh, we we got a role for you. You you do. So we're working on our animated, um, episodic TV series. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna be a star, yeah. y'all. <laughs> Tony is setting me up I for this. I'm gonna be a star, y'all. <laughs> he wants it on record, and we go all for Tony. Tony's gonna play a character. He's gonna play um, a Puerto Rican um, Afrosaurus. Rawr! How did I do? Did I do, did I do good in my audition? <laughs> I see what Tony is doing. Oh, come on now. Come on. No, no, get this a little something, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna play it back. Remember when? Yeah, remember when? Yeah. No, I, I won't I won't do like that. I, I won't do you like that. No, we got you. That is really, you know, it's really fantastic. Uh the, the you know, the vision that you have. Um, that's that's really awesome. I I I, I wanna ask you this. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday, about this whole notion of uh, of having a you know a balanced life, and 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 you pushed back on me when I you know, when I brought that up. So can we talk about that for a little bit? Yes, we can definitely talk about the balance question. Yeah. I, I do a lot of interviews, and that question does come up, and I really don't like it. Okay. Because I feel like no one ever asks a man, how do they balance? 
Mm. It's always directed to a woman about balance. I'd rather you ask, ask me, how do you execute it all? Interesting. Because I can't balance. I, I'm not, I'm a mom and I'm a business owner. I'm not 50% a mom, 50% a business owner. I'm 100% both. So I cannot just balance it. I am. Interesting. So ask me, how do I execute it versus how do you balance? So how do you execute it? I just do it. <laughs> like at the end of the yeah. day, you just got to just do it. You have to step up to your responsibility mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you make it happen every day. And then whatever you didn't make happen that day, it's on the top of the list for the next, the day. next day. Yeah, you figure it out. You figure it out. And But as it relates to my children, I bring them into this. They need to understand what mommy is doing, mm -hmm. why mommy is doing this, so that they know, okay, we reap the benefits because of and now we're focused on wanting to maintain this lifestyle. So, you know, they don't give me a hard time. They see, they they know the hustle. Yeah. They see I'm I'm here to execute. You you talked uh, you talked a little bit earlier about um, you know, having the opportunity to speak to a group of entrepreneurs who are here in Bentonville yes. uh, attending a, 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 a entrepreneurship summit with our supplier inclusion team and, uh, and getting to meet them. And I'm sure that they probably glean so much wisdom from everything that you share. You're such an open person and you share, you just share everything you've got. You don't hold back. You say, you, you say what you got to say and you share it all. Um, for those who might be watching us right now, mm -hmm. who are thinking about being entrepreneurs, what's the message that you would give them? Well, first you have to determine your why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? And the reason why you have to determine that is because if you don't have it, you're going to go, everyone's going to go through burnout, but you're going to give up. Okay. You're going to, like for me, I know that my why in life is to help enough people get to where they want to be. So then in return, I'll get to where I need to be. So I know I cannot stop because one, I'm not, I won't get to where I need to be because I'm not helping people. Yeah, yeah. So I have to remain in this space to continue to help other people. So I'm not motivated by money. And you can be motivated by money. That can be your why as well. But you have to define what your why is. You have to be passionate about it. And then people don't like this word, work. <laughs> you got to work it. Like it's the W. You got to find the why and you got to work. And then you have to be consistent with it. Mm. You just don't show up to work today. You have to do it Every single day is the wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. It 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 births discipline yeah. and character when you're consistently doing what it is you're supposed to yeah, do anyway. Right, right, right. Um, Zig Ziglar says, you know, motive. What do you say about motivation? Like. Um, somebody says it's, it's like something about not being motivated every day. Um, but you, like, you have to take a bath every day. Like, if not, you're going to smell. So you got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I really misquoted him wrong with that, but y'all can find a quote later. <laughs> but basically, it's like, you got to, yeah. you have to do It's a daily task. Every single day. Yes, yes. Unless, and, and if you don't, you won't be motivated. Right, right. It's a daily task. Yeah, we talked about you and this trainer. Yeah. I can't stand her. <laughs> But you have to show up. But I show up. Because it's for you. Because it's for me. Exactly right. That we do it every, I motivate myself every every time I have to get out of bed and know that I have to face her. Mm -hmm. I figured out how to motivate myself to make it happen. You're exactly right. Yeah. But it is, you know, that motivation, that motivation piece um, is almost like, like going to training, right? It is a muscle that you have to build. And, you know, if you want to make your muscles big, what you got to do? You got to exercise. You have to exercise. They just, it, they're just not going to grow. They're not going to get big and strong with you hoping. Hoping and a wishing. Hoping and I a wishing. I do not like the hoping and the wishing. Yeah, no, right? You just no. have to, you, you got to, you know, you got to pay the cost to be the boss, Period. as my mama used to say. Mm -hmm. April, 
This has been so much fun, and I'm just so proud of you and so excited to have had this time with you. Uh, I can only imagine what the next 17 different categories that you're going to end up in. <laughs> you know, we're going to have you 35, 40, 83. It's going to be it's going to be something else. I cannot wait to see where you hit next. So I'm going to let you go. But before I do that, you know, I love asking some crazy questions. Oh, okay. So real, real crazy ones. Here we go. Uh, not really crazy, <laughs> but if you could have an unlimited supply of something, what would it be? Peace. Mm. What's the title of your book, your, your life story? Oh, it's Never Qualified. Ooh, you've been thinking about this, haven't you? Yeah, it's called Never Qualified. Oh, I love it. Your favorite animal? Probably a dog. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really into animals. What? 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 Oh, unicorn, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, you know, unicorns. You know, you know, you know. You were probably thinking about, you know, you were probably thinking about like a, a, a real pet. animal, no, right? A pet. Look, I just told my son the other day. I said, you know what? My birthday is next month. I need a whole unicorn. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> and he probably go surprised. He was like, that. yeah. What are we doing? Why don't you have one? <laughs> oh. What food can you live without? Oh, I could live with. I love to eat. So. Yeah. <laughs> you and me too. Like. <laughs> Well, I don't like a lot of spicy foods. So okay. I can live without spicy food. Mm. And what food can't you live without? Seafood. Really? I gotta have, we talked about the crab legs. I gotta have some crab legs. <laughs> Last, give me five things that make you happy. Um, my children. Mm -hmm. The brand of Afro Unicorn mm. makes me happy. The people that I work with. Um, my parents. And the people that I'm motivating on a daily basis. Oh, that's awesome. What a way to end this. April Showers, so proud of you. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that you are going to be doing some really amazing things. So um, if you, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not following Afro Unicorn, you need to. What, what, what are you, what, what are your, what are your uh, social media handles? Afro Unicorn underscore official. Okay. Yep. Afro Unicorn underscore official, y'all. Go look for her. And, and shop I'm here at Walmart. And shop at Walmart. <laughs> we got plenty of stuff. Yeah, 17 categories. And you're going to love her. You're going to love, you, you're going to just love her Her Instagram. It's so positive. And uh, the best is when you look at all the little kids who are just, all the little girls who are just eating this stuff up. And it's just really great. Yep. April showers. Thank you so much for this time. Have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. So proud of what you're doing. Continued success. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see the next 17 categories you're going to be in. So the next 34, 85 is going to be awesome because I just know it's going to happen. I can't wait to visit the land of Afronia. It's coming. Yep. And um, continued success. Keep on doing what you're doing. We're so proud to have you uh, here at Walmart. So proud that you are in uh, in our stores. And we could, we're going to continue to have you there. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, joining us for this, uh, this segment of Real Talk at the Barbershop. It has been really, really wonderful uh, that you've been with us. Please make sure... Uh, uh, to like the episode if you like it, to share the episode with others. I hope that something that was said today, something that we discussed really becomes of help to you and to others. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me know how we're doing, what we'd like to talk about, what we haven't talked about. Would love to get your feedback. And of course, would love to have you subscribe. So just click on the bottom, hit subscribe, to subscribe. We'll take it. And uh, until the next time, thank you for joining us. Uh, continue doing what you're doing. Live good, live better. 